morning. Welcome to Suffolk Socks, where I let knit podcast. I think possibly this might be number 19. No, I don't even think it's that many. But anyway, it's Wednesday, the 23rd of July. Of July. God, not I wish in LA for years. January. January. <laughs> That's a good start, isn't it? Anyway, welcome. My name's Julie. You can find me on Suffolk, on Instagram as Suffolk Socks and Ravelry as Suffolk Socks. I run Suffolk Socks, which is an online shop that sources sock yarn. For, and for yarns for, primarily for socks and um, accessories. Or, and I am the dyer behind the Yarn Tart Yarn label, which is um, my indie dyed yarn. So welcome. Happy New Year. Um, I did do a podcast the other day and then I went back just to check and actually I virtually replicated <laughs> the whole podcast. I don't know why that's it. Delete that one. So happy 2019. Can you believe it? It's even nearly the end of January. Well, there you go. New Year was a bit, New Year's always a quiet affair. Well, I'm saying that. It was a quiet affair. This year, um, Lucy, my our eldest daughter, came round and we had a takeaway and um, she went home at nine o'clock and then I went to bed at quarter past, quarter to ten. I wasn't having any of it. So, um, yes, and my do- other daughter messaged me about quarter past twelve. I didn't even hear my phone go. So I was all right, party animal, I tell you. New Year's Day was, um, everybody came for lunch. We had a traditional New Year's Day lunch, chilly. <laughs> nobody wanted nobody wanted the traditional, you know, roast. So um we went for chili and um then everybody went back to work on the second and the third and Diddy went on the fourth. So um back to normal. But it's nice being back to normal. Right, we usually start off with finished objects, faults. And I've got loads. I have done One, two, three. I've had four finished objects in January. Three of them have been new cast-ons and what have you. I'm well on the way to finishing another one, which will be this month. So my first finished object is one that I'm wearing. I will just slide back. And this is my um, tree yokes. It is the jumper that was on the front, the front cover of the... Shetland Wool Week Annual 2018. It's by Alicia Malcolmson, I believe. I've looked for the book, but I can't find it. Just to make sure. I think it's Alicia Malcolmson. And it was the, um, as I say, I bought the wool in um, Shetland Wool Week. It's knit using a Shetland, Jameson's of Shetland Spindrift. And the colours are the pebble and, and mustard. The only thing I have done differently is on the body there was um the pebble had stitches in you know, alternating rows. I didn't do that. Um you know, like knit one pebble, knit four mustard, blah blah blah. I didn't do that. Was that would have been too busy for me. And um I probably would have forgot to do them and stuff like that, and that would have just got me nerves. So um I omitted that part of the design, but absolutely love it oh I've got a glint on my glasses there it's getting on my nerves is it muck my glasses are dreadful I've got a sore eye I've got a sty coming up on my eye but because I wear glasses I can't take them off to have a look so I'll have to wait when my husband comes home tonight anyway right so yes yeah, so this is this I um bought the wool when I was at Shetland Wool Week this was my impulse buy and um I have to say it for it being an impulse buy, it was my favourite purchase from the whole of Shetland Wool Week. I knit it on Addy Needles that I bought there as well. And absolutely love it. Love it, love it, love it. Can't say anything other than I absolutely love it. And I would knit one, another one straight away. So that's my first finished object I want to show you. My second my next two finished objects are socks. I mean, it is a sock. I do own a sock shop, so I'm always knitting socks. And these are socks that I knit over Christmas for my husband, Jonathan. These are knit um, using Hot Socks Diamond, which is a merino and nylon blend. 
Um, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. I knit them on a 2.5 needle with a 68 stitch count. And I've done a fish lips kiss here. This wool comes in 50 gram balls. So um, I knit them together really. Separate needles, but I knit them together. I didn't try to match. It just so happens that I suppose it would have been 50 gram balls. It does. I think it's off slightly down by the heel but and do you know what I think if I give them to Jonathan in the dip well I don't I'm not really fussed about matching socks and um they didn't go he wouldn't notice so yeah so these these are for him I was he was he's um all his hand knit socks seem to be a bit shabby so I think this yeah I'm gonna um do concentrate on knitting socks for him my other socks are um my Christmas Eve socks um and I actually did cast them on Christmas Eve and I finished I finished very early January if you know very early January I was amazed that I'd knit them so quick and these are the from the opal rate the opal yarn four ply yarn from the Claude Monet range which was a new range that came out the week before Christmas and this is nine eight Nine eight eight five. I'm looking. Have you? I had. Oh yeah, it's nine. Nine six eight six. And these are all the colourways. And that's where the yarns inspired by the different paintings from Claude Monet. Absolutely beautiful, beautiful. It's been really popular. The whole range has been popular. I've had to restock it twice, and um, I've just got a few balls left. Of each which I'll not be restocking I like to keep um different colors in I don't keep repeating the same but love knitting these again um these are old style socks for me <laughs> old style old style socks for me are like cuffs and kitchen head toes I never I very rare do that but I've seemed to have gone back to that I've done a rib a two by two so 64 stitches on a 2.25 needle um i like the fabric it gives me on a 2.25 um i just like the fabric because it's a dent more dense fabric so yeah fish lips kiss heel they're not matching don't do matchy matchy as i said before and i've gone into a kitchener heel and i'm just looking i think i've done this one just about a little tiddly little bit probably a couple of rows shorter but this will go in my gift box. I have a tendency um, throughout the year to just knit socks. Um, usually it's wool that I'm sampling for the shop. And um, I knit them up and I put them in my gift. I have a gift box. It's a bit like a box of socks can't wear. And then at Christmas, um, I don't, like these ones I specifically knit with John in mind because I need to, because he wants a longer one. So like they go above his bike boots and what have you um but once that i love the color for if i just think well, i'm gonna knit them as a sample i just put them away and then at Chris, nearer christmas i'll decide when i open my box who's having what so yeah so they're my that's my third finished object my fourth and final finished object is a hat now i'm not a hat wearer but everybody's gone mad on hats haven't on instagram at the minute and when I was in Cumbria last year at a knitting retreat, I was, we were all gifted a pattern by Elizabeth Doherty of Blue Big Studios. It's slightly different. I should have had another repeat of this, but I chose not to. And I'm, I've knit it in uh, on 3.25 needles and I've used some Drops Alpaca that I bought from treacle which is a wool shop up in Morpeth in Northumberland um last year when I was up there for a Christmas I bought it to knit a jumper but when I've looked at the pattern on the jumper it is so fiddly the pattern on a drops pattern that I thought Ugh. and actually this pink this pink this um yellow it just doesn't do anything for me I'll put it on I'm not really a hat person but I just think it looks a bit, sticks out a bit here. Yeah, I've made it a bit slouchy. 
this I wear this well I've got this one but this is my hat I wear all the time that I knit um and this is my other one that I've, I'll show you this one I knit that yet this years ago but this is the one I wear all the time and this is my um Rachel Coopy hat out of a hat thing now it, it's not very long so I can't pull it down <laughs> I can't lift it up looks bloody ridiculous doesn't it but I love this one so this is the one that has usually stuffed in my handbag and um yeah but I'm not usually I'm not a hat person um not woolen hat just because I get a hot head and messes my hair up you know so right that's all my finished objects I'm dead chuffed with them all I've been such a prolific knitter and think I might have been very good at casting on too I've got even more new cast on points oh my hair has gone I washed my hair this morning my new year's resolution which I failed to do this morning is to condition my hair and brush it I never condition my hair and I very rarely brush it all right hack on I go up to my mum's in fact do you know what? I didn't own a hairbrush until a few years ago. And an uncle of mine died and I went up for the funeral. And um, I knew, I knew that my mum would say, do you want to brush your hair? <laughs> she always says that to me. <laughs> do you want to use my hairbrush? And I'll say, no thanks, mum. <laughs> I just don't brush my hair. And... Um, when I went up for this funeral, I thought to myself, do you know what? I'm going to call her bluff. I'm going to go and buy a hairbrush. <laughs> so I went and bought a hairbrush. Don't know where it is. But, um, and then I've, I've got it. I have, I'm seeing. I might brush it once a month. Once a week. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't get tatty or anything. So, anyway, but that's going to be my New Year's resolution. I'll probably, I failed miserably because I haven't, I've brushed it once. It's, when I went out on Saturday night, I went to work out for supper, and I thought, "Oh, I better do my hair tidy rather than have a bonny tail." I look where it's like, as my husband calls it. <laughs> right, whips. That was a bit of a waffle, wasn't it? Whips works in progress. But I've got a few, but it doesn't bother me. It absolutely doesn't bother me. If it doesn't bother me, it shouldn't bother anybody else, should it? They all get finished eventually. What year? Who cares? But they get finished eventually. Right. I've decided I'm going to go back old school. I'm going to get rid of my notions. Well, not so much get rid of my notions pouch. My notions pouch, I don't know about you, but it seems to be getting as big as me um, project bags. I'm like thinking, well, I can't live, I can't live without that in me um, project bag. I mean, it mean oceans. Oh, I definitely need that. Oh, and I definitely need that. Now I think, well, no, I don't. All I need is probably, you know, I don't really need anything in my knitting bag when I'm knitting, unless I'm sewing up. So, there you go. I'll have a, I'm going to try and whittle it down to a more manageable size bag. And I have got a bag. I bought a lovely little velvet bag when I was in um, Cumbria. There's a lovely little gift shop in, next, in the tea room. That's a beautiful little velvet bag. And I thought, oh, be, well, actually, it was Deb Tin Hickman who bought one. And she uses one. I thought, that's absolutely ideal. I'm going to have that. So anyway. So there you go. There's a bit of another waffle. Whips. <laughs> and there's quite a few socks. I'm on a socket kick. As I said, I am making, I am doing John a lot of socks. So I've cast them all on man sizes. Well, his size. And these are a 68 stitch count on a 2.5 needle with a rib. Because I always do ribs on men's socks. Fish lips heel. And I haven't got to the toe yet on this. So I haven't decided what sort of toe I'm going to do. But I think I might do the uh, my straight star toe. Because it fits him okay. Well, I think it fits him okay. It doesn't mourn on. It doesn't mention it. And this is a commercial sock yarn. Love a good commercial sock yarn. And it is a Grundle Hot Socks Medina. And this number is colour number two. It doesn't have a colour name. It just has a colour number. 
absolutely lovely, lovely. Um, I bought this as part of a mystery commercial sock yarn. And I bought some colours that weren't in the shop. And when I was organising um, my shop, I had I still hadn't entered these into the shop, so I thought I'm gonna knit them up and put them in the shop. But so now they're available at eight pounds for hundred gram balls, and it's um let's see, seventy-five percent wool, twenty-five percent polyamide, and it's um four hundred and twenty meters, so there's plenty of wool on there for a good man size sock. My husband takes an eleven, ten or eleven, and um plenty wool for that so that's that one and then the the other colorway that i'm knitting for him is again from the same range and it is in color number four same green um same shades they're not dissimilar you could probably wear them together i think um Fish lips kiss heel, 68 stitch count, and I'm knitting these as is as I am the other ones on a higher, higher steel. I like the steel because it doesn't impale my finger. That's a killer, isn't it? Oh. So anyway, so that's that two by two rib. Um, I don't do a massive rib, but yeah. Absolutely thoroughly enjoying this. I was sitting knitting these this morning at half past two. I went to bed. John was away last night. He stayed over last night in London. And um, I just thought, oh, do you know, about half past eight, I thought, oh, I'm going to get out of bed. So I went up with me knitting and what have you. And I was sitting listening to my audio book. I'm listening to the Cupcake Calf and what have you. And um, I turned the light off about 10 o'clock. But I woke up. Something woke me. I've got, I've got an elderly gentleman living next door, Gerald. God, I think he like, I think he sleeps all day and comes out at night because he's banging and everything going on. And um, it must have been him that woke us up. So at half past two, I was wide awake and then, and in the end, I got up and made a cup of coffee. So, yeah. And that lives in my little project bag, my practically perfect in every way project bag, which is um, a button applique and embroidery. Embroidery, sorry. That's that one. And the net, all my work, I call them my work samples, live in this basket. I bought this from a haberdashery, not a haberdashery shop, like a, um, a shop in Halesworth up in Suffolk. Is it in Suffolk or Norfolk? Suffolk. And um, it had everything. You go in, it's got like baskets and it's got a few suitcases, it's got umbrellas and at the back it's got a bit of paint and some DIY stuff. Oh, it's lovely. And um, I bought that years ago. It must have been about 12 years ago I bought that. And um, I just keep all my work project, all my work socks in it. Again, this is the same range. Now, I think this, I did look, I think this is number six, colour number six. I can't be sure, though. And uh, fish lips kiss heel. I'm doing a rib on this because I'll probably... Well, I don't know who I'll give these to, but I'm just knitting it up to see what it knits up like. But it's pretty, very lovely. That's it caked up. It's all fallen to bits now. And um, I'm knitting these on a 2.25, so that means it's a 64 stitch count. Do you think that cake's going to go on mad on us? What did I just do? And I'm using my Knit Pro DPNs. Um, I'm just using DPNs. Because I couldn't find me um what do we call it? magic loop. So yeah, fix it. That's that one. And I've got two more. I've got about six pairs of socks on the go. But you know, it doesn't bother me. They're all vanilla socks. I've decided I love me vanilla socks. Me jump as I do fancy jump as well. That takes me brain power. I've got me socks. I like I like plain socks. If it's a commercial yarn. So I've knit one. These are no further forward than the last time I showed you. Because when I looked back at the other podcast, I can I was thinking, Craig, you've not knit them yet. They've just been just gone further at the bottom. And these are in my sugar tits colourway, which was my um colour for last year. That's Christmas colour. But they're lovely. You know, I should really I should crack on and get them finished. They are on a um a Addy needle. My Addy um, fixer, 80, cent, 80 inches, 80 centimetres, I can't remember. They're in my sockness bag. 
And my final sock. Oh, no, I'm loving this. These, this is my new yarn colourway. And this is Topsy Turvy. Isn't it lovely? Oh, I absolutely love this. I'm definitely blowing my trumpet on this one. And um, I'm doing it a little bit different this time. Um, I do have a vanilla sock pattern, just a basic vanilla sock pattern that I have. Um, I don't know, I think it is a bit little online. Just the basic way I do the twisted cast on. Oh, what have you? And I don't as legs, hence the tattoo. I did get a message off one of my nieces saying, and did you really feel got a tattoo on your leg? I was like, no, but I've got one on my foot, which I knew I had. She thought I'd gone tattoo mad, but that's loose. And this is it knit up. Isn't that just adorable? Now, what I've done with this is I have done a little bit of a rib. And then I have knit just above the heel flap. I have done a few rows. I think I've done about 10 rows. I've knit one slip one. Then the next round I knit. Knit one slip one. Pearl ways. And, um... And then I've gone into, when I've finished that, I've gone into a heel flap with a gar I call it a garter tab where I just knit the first two stitches on every pearl roll. And it just pulls it in a little bit at the heel. Um, I just thought I'd see what that, have a bit of play with that, see what that looks like. And um, heel gusset, what I do there. And... Um, I haven't decided what tool I'll do. I'll probably do like the straight star tool, what I always do. And these are on my higher, higher sharps, which um, I'm slowly falling out of love with because they just have my finger so, so. Um, in action, it's it's like really, that's where it is. Oh, it's so, so. Which is a common problem I think everybody has with the um, higher, higher sharps. But isn't that pretty? Absolutely adorable. And that is living in my fringe bag. I love a fringe bag. This is the toffee colour way that I got off my husband for my birthday. I've got two more cast -ons. Oh, dear me. That is a lot, isn't it? Right. I am going to be a grandma again in May. So I thought it was about time I started working on some baby knits. So, um... Lydia, my daughter-in-law, doesn't do, she's not like a baby pink matinee jacket, but she does love, you know, colour. So I'm knitting the baby a flax light, and I'm joining in with um, Geordie Knits, who has a flax along on Instagram, and um, she lives in the northeast. I think she lives in Prudda. I won't say brother, but she's just started doing a podcast. Go check her out. It's really lovely. And she's been going around um, some of the different yarn shops. She went up to Ring of Rosie, which is just a fabulous yarn shop up north. It's my favourite yarn shop up north because it's just about four miles from where my mum and dad live. But it's well worth a visit. And um, Barbara dyes her own, she has her own, her own range, but she sells a lot of commercial yarn beautiful absolutely beautiful shop and then um she went to lucy locket land um and i know lucy um i went on lucy's first retreat um because she had it in the a village in jurich which is the other three mile away from my mum and dad so i went up and spent the week a few days with my mum, and then i went and spent it to the retreat but her shop looks beautiful as well and she's got an online presence so um, I don't think Barbara at Ringer Rosie has an online presence like the shop, but um, I know Lucy does. So uh, anyway, I'm going off on a tangent here. So this is it. This is in my Brogue colourway, and it's a lovely chestnut-y grey-brown. And it's so tiddly, isn't it? I can't believe that. You're laughing. That can't possibly fit a baby. <laughs> but it will. That's the 6 to 12 months. And that's it. See if you can get it darker. Oh, it's just lovely. Absolutely lovely. I was dying in it something. And um, I thought, right, the new baby can have a brown jumper from my grandma. Her or his grandma. <laughs> um, that's going to be so exciting. 
you automa- I automatically think it's going to be another girl because they've got Matilda. You do that, don't you, when you've had your when you've had a girl, you and you're pregnant again. You think, well, it could be a girl. Well, it probably is a girl, but and you're always surprised when it's not. So we will see. Whatever the baby is, it's going to be a very welcome, loved baby. I thought all babies are. I love being a grandma. I do. I love being a grandma. My final cast up, my final whip, I have to say, is my um, shrug with a hook. And this is my, I'm just knitting a plain, present shape shawl. I'm knitting the Lizzie hat. And I'm using one of my woes that was from my stash. Um, I caked this up to knit, gift, gift my sister for Christmas. But um, I don't know what had happened. I think I, I snapped it. I, I got in a tangle, so I had to cut it. And I ended up with two 50 gram bolts, and I thought, oh no, I'll just keep this for me. Oh. Oh, I have to stop now, excuse me. It's work. Hi, I'm back. Sorry about that. That was um, my daughter. The, our, the office is down at the, bo- the bottom of our road, and um, she was phoned up to see if I wanted to have some lunch. So she's going to pop in and get my purse so she can go and get her some soup or a tin of beans or whatever. So right, sorry. So anyway, as I was saying, this is my shrug with a hug appeal. Shrug with a hug, sure. Shrug with a hug, sure. You're asking. Let me just turn my phone off so nobody else phones me. Well, the will phones. We just won't disturb. Right, the shrug with a hug is um, a thing I'm doing. Where in the month of December two thousand and nineteen, I am going to donate. All the shawls I've knit um, to Elizabeth Hospice in Ipswich. Um, in um, in remembrance of my friend Sue who died just before Christmas. Um, when she was diagnosed, I knit. I've, I've, I explained this in the last one. When she was diagnosed, I knit her a shawl, a big shawl, and um, I told her that it was a shrug with a hug from me. And um, she wore it all the time, and um, she did love it. And what have you? And I thought, um, what nice are we for? What a nice thing to do for Sue would be for the knit others um, a shawl, uh, because Sue attended Elizabeth Hospice, and she spoke with such admiration and um, gratefulness of all the people involved within that um, within that structure. You know, the French maid at the groups, she went to the doctors, the nurses. She couldn't speak more highly of them. And I just thought, for honour Sue and remember Sue, the month of December. Well, I, you know, I remember every month. But I would gift, take to the hospice, all the shawls I've made, and um, they can gift them to the patients. So I'm doing non-gender colours. Well, I'm saying non-gender colours. I am doing some girly shawls. You know, there's no, I'm not, there's no doubt about it. I'm going to do some girly shawls, lacy shawls and what have you. But I'm also going to be doing some um, plain, just triangular wraps for the, ma- the men um, that the men can use. I did think about knitting cowls and stuff like that, but then I didn't want anything to be obstructing... Um, tubes or you know like medicine medical care that they needed and um i just wanted something that I could maybe wrap around their shoulders if the men didn't want them then they could gift them to their partner which i'm more than happy with and what were i know there's um 18 beds in the hospice and um if i got more than 18 which I, i'm sure i will do um I will take them to the children's hospice, which is just up the road, each, which is East Anglia Children's Hospice. And some of the older children can have one of the shawls or in the other wraps. And the younger ones could be gifted them and they could give them to their mummy or their carer or their, you know, their parent, I should say. And um, I just think that would be lovely. Sue would love that. So anybody who wants to knit a shawl, 
please feel free to my it's going to be a non-fundraising event this and i really would love it if you just used wool from your stash i won't be promoting any dyes myself included i won't be promoting and there'll be no specific wool color you just can knit whatever you choose and uh, will be beautiful and gratefully received from me and um any shawl pattern you can make it up you probably you know if you've got one your favorite knit that um there's plenty of free patterns on in on ravelry um so if you want to knit that would be absolutely fabulous i will um put on instagram or i may put along the bottom i don't know how i do that yet where i'll put the address i'm getting them sent to my registered office down the road which is saracen house and that's 20 so it's saracen house 25 st margaret's green ipswich ip4 2b n yes so that's that then right that's all my whips that's everything the banging you've just heard is my daughter coming in for my purse because <laughs> i says just come in i'll treat you to lunch tin of soup <laughs> so Oh, I've oh I've got one more whip. Gosh, I've got so many, haven't I? And I've nearly finished this. I've just seen somebody, um, Nicola Bumblebee Stitches, just posted a photograph of her finished Tecumseh. Oh, it's beautiful. I hope mine turns out as nice as hers. Her neck looks lovely. My neck looks a bit funny on this. And I've just got one sleeve to go, so that's my knitting tonight. This is my evening knit. I don't knit socks on an evening. Um, because socks are, I call it me work knitting. So I was knit a jumper. So I've got this. Now, do, where did I put that lump? I've just had some lovely ribbon that I'm going to put on the jumper to see if it keeps the neck straight. Anyway, I'll, let's see if it's in here. Again, this has been kept in my fringe bag. I've got this. This was a present present from me to me for Christmas. And it's got my lovely pin on. Well, it's a pin that my daughter bought me, our Lucy. Isn't that lovely? Oh, I don't want to do things like that. So, yeah, so this is it. This is knit in round my wool that I bought from the Salt Teague shop. Yeah, you see where the neck looks a bit floppy. Looks like a bit funneled. I'm sure it'll be all right one, one. I'm not sure. I'm not sure at all, actually. But absolutely, I've loved knitting it. Absolutely loved knitting it. And I've finished the sleeve. The only thing I've done a little bit different on the sleeve is you knit straight and then you do all your decreases there. I have done a couple of decreases to tape my sleeve in a little bit. Um, yes. Absolutely love it. Can't see anything more than that. I love it. It seems to be my mantra of the day. <laughs> It might go a bit longer, but I've got, I'll have a few more, I'll have a few balls left. I think I've got about three balls left of the blue. So I'll have enough to make it um, a little bit longer, should I wish to. I don't know where they've come out of. So right, so that's all my whips. Haven't I got enough to keep me going? I don't class socks as me whips. I class that as work. <laughs> I can justify that. <laughs> I'm happy to justify that. Like that. So anyway. I'm going to do a mini shop update now. I'm really uncomfortable doing this and I'm embarrassed doing it, but I'm still going to do it. Pull me big girl knickers up. These are some bags I've been making and they're practically perfect in every way. Now, I made my little tweed bag years ago when I first opened Suffolk Shops, Suffolk Socks. I got some um, tweed and made some little like bucket bags just, just for a sock project. Now, sometimes get, you can get a short project in here, just a one skin skein shawl project with a bouquet of oh, let's go, of buttons on and over the over the last few years well people have been asking me when i've had that why don't i make that for the shop i didn't make many of them for the shop and i thought do you know what i'm gonna so i have and these are them this is harris tweed it's fully lined with a lovely cotton lining it's eight inches by about nine inches and um we've got button 
floral a floral bouquet. And they're like a carpet bag, Mary Poppins carpet bag. They come in the brown. I've got it in the purple. I've got it in the green. And I've got it in the blue. I've also got it in the oatmeal. I love this one. This one I'm in the middle of making. This is an order. I'm making this. And I've had to stop doing it because I actually can't find a needle with a bigger eye. So that's my job to do it, going to town <laughs> to get a needle with a bigger eyelet. And then I've got this one. This is the Valentine's one. So I've got to make a couple of these today. Aren't they lovely? Absolutely lovely. So they are available in my shop. Pre-order. I've, um, I've got one each of a sample and um, I'm doing a two-week delivery um, just because I didn't want to make loads and they didn't sell. So I thought I would show you some of the wools I've got. These are my top. I've dyed this. This is Cherry Blossom Road. It's where the Banks family live. And this is Big Ben Strikes 12. This is Get Off the Grass. I keep off the grass. I can't remember which one I went for. I actually love this one. And this one is Gas Lamps. Lanterns lit. But this is equally as pretty as well. So these I dyed. I'm going to knit these all up for samples because... Um, I don't usually do take notes of what I'm dying. They're all one-offs, but with these, I did, so that I know I can re repeat them if I want to. So anyway, how long have I been down? Oh, another 10 minutes. Right, so future plans. Well, I haven't really got any future plans. I just take each day as it comes these days. I've got, I'm going to a knitting retreat in March, that I do know. And I did have good plans of going to um, Edinburgh Yarn Festival, but I decided to pull the plug on that one. I just thought, I'm going to another retreat in June. And I thought, you know, my knitting pot isn't that deep. Um, so I decided to go, not go to Edinburgh. I'm going to be vending at a festival um, in June or July which I know about, but I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say. <laughs> so I'll tell you next time. And then um, that's it. That's all I've got future plans for me. Future knitting plans are to cast on some more socks and um, finish Jonathan's jumper. This is what um, I still haven't... I really can't get into the swing of this. I'm knitting this, which is the... Mara, ma, ma, I can't even see it actually. Can Macaron, Macrahanish by Kate Davies. So um, I'm doing that, which is just a sleeveless, it's like a tank, it's a tank top, v neck tank top. So I'll be doing that. And um, yeah, so that's it. More baby knits, more socks, more of everything really. It's all right. Now I'm going to get my beans on toast. So take care and happy knitting and I will see you next month. Bye.